When I'm visiting a new city and I want to know if it has any chance of being great, the most important thing for me is walkability. Walkable neighborhoods are always the best. But the second most important thing is the answer to the question, do your buses get stuck in traffic? This one question reveals so much about a city's priorities and the way its citizens live. Let me explain. There's a term in urban planning called the Downs-Thompson Paradox. The equilibrium speed of car traffic on a road network is determined by the average door-to-door -door speed of equivalent journeys taken by public transport. Uh, yeah, but it, it basically means that it doesn't matter how many roads you build. Car traffic will get worse and worse and worse until it becomes faster to take the bus. Or the metro. Or the tram. You get the idea. And this isn't some academic curiosity either, it's been observed time and time again in cities all over the world. But while it might seem paradoxical at first, it actually makes a lot of sense if you give it some thought. When it comes down to it, there really aren't that many car people, bicycle people, train people, or unicycle people. The vast majority of people in the world just want to get from point A to point B as quickly and conveniently as possible. Well, maybe not the unicycle people. For Amsterdam, it's often a bicycle. For Tokyo, it's usually a train. But for far too many of the world's cities, it's a car. And the reason for this is very clear. Why would anybody take this bus if it's going to get stuck in the same traffic as a car? The answer for most cities in the US and Canada is simple. You ride the bus because you're too poor to drive. If you had any choice, you wouldn't. When your public transportation is only used by the poor and the desperate, it's hard to get much support for it. People taking the bus are looked down upon, and anybody wealthy enough to have any political influence whatsoever doesn't care about improving service. If anything, they'll see public transportation as a nuisance, for instance, complaining that the streetcars are in the way of their car. They just want it to go away. This is the, look, I don't care where the poor people go, just as long as they're not in the way of my car, approach to public transport. Ultimately, that means the city devolves into a mess of car traffic with giant gaps between the rich and the poor. But back to the paradox. If buses and trams get stuck in traffic so it can never be faster to take the bus, then what happens to car traffic? Well, it increases. Almost indefinitely. And North American cities have continued to take on more and more debt to build roads they can't afford in an attempt to manage it. This is typical hourly traffic volumes in cities in the Netherlands, with clear morning and evening rush hour. However, in cities where there are no alternatives to driving, car traffic becomes so bad that people start leaving earlier and earlier. Pretty soon, rush hour morphs to become several hours long. Here are 16 lanes of car traffic in Toronto, Canada. This video was taken at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday in the middle of summer holidays. Daytime traffic never gets better than this. Every one of these people had a choice of how they were going to get around that day, but this city made decisions that meant that every single one of them had to choose a car. So what's the solution? Thankfully, more and more cities are waking up to the problem and have started to do something about it. New York recently removed cars almost completely from 14th Street to speed up the buses. San Francisco recently did the same on Market Street. And Toronto removed most of the cars from King Street, which has significantly increased streetcar ridership. What's also interesting is that while the Downs-Thompson paradox was originally described for public transportation, it actually applies to any alternative. If it's more convenient to take a bicycle, then some people will switch to a bicycle, as is common in parts of the Netherlands and Denmark. And if it's faster to walk, then people will walk. An incredible statistic is that 40% of people who live in downtown Toronto walk to work because most people feel unsafe cycling and traffic has become so bad that it's literally faster to walk. So any alternative to driving has the ability to reduce car traffic. It doesn't mean that everybody has to take the bus or that everybody has to ride a bicycle. Even the Autolua areas in the Netherlands allow some motor vehicles. But making the alternatives faster for even a segment of the population can lead to significant improvements, and some Dutch cities like Amsterdam do this really well. 
I occasionally hear drivers in the Netherlands complaining that they have to take circuitous routes through the city to get to their destination, or that they have to wait while bicycles and trams get priority. But I assure you, the alternative is worse. If taking a car becomes quick and convenient, then all these people on trams and bicycles will take a car too, and that direct route will become slower to drive than today's indirect route. Not to mention all the other problems that come along with an increase in car traffic in the city. So the next time you're sitting in traffic and see the bus speed by in the priority lane, remember the Downs-Thompson paradox, and be glad you're not driving in this. <laughs>